1 Timothy chapter 4, and let's stand for the reading of the Word of God. First Timothy chapter 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from needs which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. I'd like to call your attention to verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You may be seated. I'm going to speak tonight for the Lord's help on last day's deception. Last day's deception. I don't think it would be hard for us to agree tonight that we are living in the last day. That's right. That the signs all about us indicate to us that time is running out for this generation. That the promise of Jesus to come back is just on the horizon. And we are seeing the signs of the time. The promises of God of the end times being fulfilled before our eyes. We have just observed on the world scene a remarkable incident. An incident that speaks to us about the end times. We have just uh, buried a folk who served for over 25 years, if I remember correctly. Served for over 25 years as the Pope of the Roman Church. One of the most influential popes of all times. They were crying even at his funeral for Sainted for John Paul II, John Paul II. So, in this funeral, of course, watched probably worldwide over the media and covered by the media around the world, millions of people observed this occurrence and a bill, over a billion people who are members of that. Uh, organization, the Roman Catholic Church, and people cried and weeping over the passing of this man, John Paul II. In the funeral, there were heads of state from all around the world. Our president was there at the funeral. Not only was our president there, but uh, there were heads of state from all around the world that are represented. Former presidents of the United States, President Clinton, former President Clinton, former President uh, George Bush, George W. Spock. And among the attenders there, the important attenders at this funeral, were leaders of other religions in the world the Buddhists, the Muslims, the Orthodox, um, Protestant leaders. Religious leaders from around the world gathered to pay respect and honor to this Pope, John Paul II. This man, in his tenure as Pope of the Roman Catholic Church, had been reaching out to various faiths. He reached out to the Jews, he reached out to the Muslims, he reached out to various world religions, and had established bridges to these other world religions. I noticed in the paper that uh, the leader, the spiritual leader of the Tibetan people, what's his name? Belai Lama, who they consider to be a deity and worship him as a deity. He's in exile because China is, has conquered Tibet. 
but they are Tibetan Buddhists. And this man, the Dalai Lama, is their spiritual leader, considered to be deity by his people. And he was there at this funeral praising the Pope John Paul II. It was remarkable. I mean, it was astonishing, really, to see such a gathering of people from various countries and various religions, all praising this man, John Paul II. But it was just an indication of how far we are down the road toward the last days. Right. The Bible has told us men of God have been preaching for years that in the last days, that would be a one world government. Not only would that be a one world government, that would be a one world religion. And sometimes things happen slowly, you know, and we're not conscious of what's happening. But when we have an occurrence like this, in which before the eyes of the whole world, we see the breaking down of barriers, we see that, that there is a coming together of the religions of the world and that it is forming before our eyes what the scriptures have told us would happen in the last days. The Bible teaches us that there are going to be two world leaders in the last days. Revelation chapter 13 shows us a man, a beast coming up out of the sea. And this man is the uh, political leader of the world. He will be the Antichrist, establish a system of government that will rule over all the people of the world. And the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 13 about another beast that comes on the scene. And this beast is a false prophet. He's the religious leader of the whole world. So you have a political leader and you have a religious leader. And I don't know, I don't know how to identify them. I could not tell you who they are, who they're going to be. But I can assure you that we are living close, brother, to the time of the rise of the Antichrist and the rise of the false prophet. And the Bible tells us that in the latter days, some shall be part from the faith. It said that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Now the faith is not just a, an act of belief, but when he speaks about some departing from the faith, he's talking about the body of truth that is believed. The body of truth that, that you believe in order to be saved. He said that some shall depart from the faith. That is, a, they're going to forsake the revealed word of God. Do you remember Jude? saying in his writings that I was minded to write unto you of this common salvation. But I thought it necessary to write unto you to that we should what, earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints, that is once for all given and delivered to the saints of God. That body of truth is found within the pages of the word of God. He said that in the last days, the Spirit spoke clearly that some would depart from that body of truth that was delivered to us in the pages of Scripture. Now, I'm going to tell you why men are departing from the faith. First of all, they're denying the source of the faith. They deny that the Word of God is literally, the, that God is literally the author of the Word of God. They deny the fact that all Scripture is inspired by God. Every word of this Bible is true. It has its source in God. And Jesus told us, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When you deny the source of the Word of God, then men begin to question the authenticity of the Word of God. So we see in our day, not only is the source of the Word of God denied, but people begin to question the authenticity of the written Word of God. And men are asking questions about the Word of God and denying the truth of the Word of God and saying that it cannot be trusted and it cannot be depended upon. And not only is the Word of God 
doubted, but it is neglected. And I'm going to tell you, you do just as much damage when you neglect it as if you doubt it. That's right. That's right. You better be careful what kind of a Bible you buy. There's one authorized version of the Bible, about a hundred unauthorized per version of the Bible. All right, brother. You got me, brother. Watson. Amen. Praise God. We got all kinds of versions. We get the version of everybody. Yeah. You know, if you want to find the version, you can find you one. Uh, that will suit you. Yeah. But you know, the Word of God must not only be believed, it must not be neglected. If you neglect the Word of God, what difference is it if you doubt it and if you neglect it? You may say, I believe that Bible. I believe it's true. But if you neglect the Bible, you will not know what's in that Bible. Oh, it won't do you any good unless you apply yourself to the Word of God. The Bible tells us, man, shall not live by bread alone. If you want to live, if you want to have spiritual life, it's found in the pages of that book. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. When we understand the importance of that book, Jesus said to some, you do err because you do not know the scriptures and, and you do not know the power of God. And we have to be acquainted with the author as well as what he has spoken. And, and God says this is what keeps us from error and from deception is knowing the author and knowing the book. Right. You do not know the scriptures and you do not know the power of God. My brother, this Bible the one man said sin will keep you from this book and or this book will keep you from sin. Right. If you say, well, young people, listen. You say, I want to know the will of God. The will of God has been revealed to you in the pages of this book. If you will study the Bible, you won't have to go around wondering so much what is the will of God for me. That Bible will tell you what the will of God is for your life. You say, well, it don't tell me what school to go to. It don't tell me what career to choose. It don't tell me all these details about my life. But if you study that book, it will give you principles that will bound your life, and that will uh, that will steer you in the right direction. And you'll find out there's a lot of things it's not the will of God because it contradicts the principles of the Word of God. When you understand that this contradicts the principles of the Word of God, I know it's not the will of God for my life. When you learn those principles, it'll keep you on the straight and narrow path. And you must know the Word of God. And my brother, it's dangerous to neglect the Word of God. And it's ever been dangerous. It is right now because we're living in a time of deception. And the Bible tells us that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times many shall depart from the faith. Hear me. That was a survey done. Just a uh, short time ago, there was an article in Christianity Today, last month or so. This guy was writing about this survey done of young people in America. He said that the young people in America said, we like our parents. He said, we like our church. He said, uh, we like... The, 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 the church we go to like to go to church. And so the people doing the survey started talking to them one on one. Tell us what you believe. Tell us what are the basic tenets of your faith. They couldn't tell. Me. They said we like our parents, we like our church, we like our religion. They couldn't tell me anything about it. Didn't know what they believed. Had no idea of the doctrines of the scriptures. Had no idea what the Bible really taught. They went to church. I'm telling you, these children went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. He said these children attended church regularly, but they could not tell you what they believed. They did not know the doctrines of the Bible. I'm telling you, that is fertile ground for deception. Yes, you hear me? I said, that is fertile ground for deception when you're raising a generation that knows nothing about what the Bible says. That's right. Help God. This man went on. And he said, are y'all hearing me? This man went on. 
And he said that not only did the young people not know what the Bible taught, but mom and dad didn't either. And he said he was astonished to find out these young people liked their parents, liked the religion of their parents, didn't know nothing about the religion, parents didn't know nothing about it either, so the parents were just producing carbon copies of themselves. Mm -hmm, that's right. What about that? You know, we're going to lose this battle for our young people if we don't win it in our own. We're going to lose this battle for our young people if they are not taught and instructed in our families oh, in the doctrines God. of the Bible. Right. We have lived through a generation and a generation that said doctrine does not matter. In fact, doctrine is divisive. We must not preach or teach doctrine. So we've avoided doctrine. We don't want to spread up anything, talk about anything. That might offend somebody, it might cross somebody else's doctrinal theology, and we are quiet and silent upon doctrine. What we have done is we have robbed a generation of doctrinal truth and because we have failed to teach them the things that they need to know in order to be saved. Afraid we'll offend somebody, afraid somebody's going to get their feelings hurt. And, but brother, these young people need to have doctrinal truth. And the Bible tells us and, that there are doctrines of devils out there seducing spirits. Yes. And, and when oh, I the truth back in them, the devil will fill that vacuum with error and deceive them. And God has given us responsibility in our homes and families and churches and to fill the minds of our people with the truths of the word of God, my brother. Now, the reason that people believe lies, the reason that they believe deceit, is because they don't know the truth. They don't have any idea what the Bible teaches. If you were to ask them, tell me, how is a man saved? What does it take in order to get to heaven? What does it mean to be a Christian? What is the what is the marks, the absolute essential characteristics of a person who is right with God? You'd be surprised how many people sit on church pews and holding these churches would have no idea how to tell somebody to get to heaven, have no idea. What are the distinguishing marks of a person that's right with God, who is ready to meet God? I have no idea. You know why? Because we're neglecting the source and the, the, the source of truth, the word of God. He said that in the last days this would happen. That is the reason why that we're having so much, that, that, that the enemy is being so successful in drawing our young people into deception is because the church is silent on the truth. I picked up a, a Jewish newspaper today. What was it? What is the name of it? Jerusalem Post. Jerusalem Post. Sister Francis Davis gives us a wife and I just had to pick up one today. I couldn't hardly believe my eyes. I read about the Jews in America. And uh, in America, Judaism is facing the same kind of crises that the American church is facing. Whenever you have prosperity, and uh, whenever you have uh, uh, educational attainments, you got problems in religion. And the Jews are having the same kind of problem in their religion that the Christians are having in theirs. And they say that they're establishing synagogues and schools in America, the Jews are now, that are de-emphasizing denominations. They don't, the Jews don't have as many denominations as we do, as Christians do, but they do have denominations. And in these schools, they're de emphasizing denominations, and they are teaching these young Jewish people that there is no such thing as absolute truth. 
everybody is to discover what is true for them. And so it's an atmosphere of pluralism. You can believe what you want to believe. You can uh, practice your religion how you want to practice it. And it's nobody else's business which direction you go in. The only thing they will not tolerate is somebody who is intolerant. They will not tolerate somebody who says, I know what's right. That is a no no in his schools. As I read that, I, uh, I began to think about the Christian religion and even the holiness religion and how we are developing toward that same mindset. Much of the Christian world has already gotten there in which there is nothing, no absolute truth. Everybody defines their own truth. One sociologist wrote a book and said, in America, there are 260 million denominations. In other words, every man is a denomination himself. He makes up his own religion, believes his own thing, practices it on his own way. As one girl said, her first name was Sheila, and somebody asked her to define her religion. She said, my religion is Shelaism. And that's the way we view religion now. We don't have no, no standard of truth. We don't have any authoritative source that we go to to define truth. We define it ourselves. We decide what we want to believe. We decide which direction we want to go. And so we got 260 million denominations. We might have a Catholicism and a Judaism. Well, that's pretty close to the Jewish religion. But, uh, you know, everybody's defining their own religion, you see. And when we do that, when we fail to understand that that is an authoritative source of truth, that is the Word of God. And it's not open to private interpretation. That's an author that's given it to us. And he's the only interpreter of it. And if you're interested in the truth, he'll teach you the truth. But the Bible says that he's going to send us another comforter. He's going to send us the Holy Ghost. And what is he going to do? He's going to guide us into all truth, my brother. This book is inspired by him. The Holy Ghost is here to teach us and instruct us. Young folks, you can know the truth. I tell you, you can know the truth. As Pilate stood in the presence of Jesus and said, What is the truth? And, and turned and walked away from the truth. And, but I'm here to tell you, you can know the truth. If you want to know the truth, God has given you us the truth in the Word of God. And you can know the truth that God will teach you through the Holy Ghost. And what is truth? Now I'm saying, if you're not interested in the truth, you're not going to get the truth. You don't have a hard thought. If you're not really concerned about it, you will not know the truth unless you have a heart to know the truth. And young folks, I'm watching that board in the back. Sister Jenny, I'm watching that board. I pray back there in that room. <laughs> you might be that board. I'm watching that board. God help you. Oh yeah, I'm telling you, I'm not much interested in the truth. Some of you are not really interested in the truth. You need to answer that book? When you start getting that word of God, and you start studying that Bible, and you start saying, God, there's something more important to me than having a big time. Yes. Something more important to me than playing on that cell phone. Oh, something more important to me than playing on that computer. Yes. God. God. I'm concerned about the word of God. I want to know the truth. God the Bible me. tells us you shall know the truth. And, and the truth oh, shall set you free. Right. Oh, when you get down to business with God. Yeah, when you get on your face before God and say, God, I must know the truth. And I've got to go to heaven. I've got to be aware of what's right. right. That's right. Now, I've got to be aware of what's right. I've got to show other people what's right. And oh. I've got to Get down to business with God. God will teach you the truth. 
Jesus said, you won't go around in life. This is your books. God don't want you running around in life wondering what is the will of God for me. And anything you don't understand that if you like knowledge, you ask God to give it to all men liberty and praise not that shall it shall be given. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right. Oh, that's right. Thank praise God. God. If you didn't get the Bible of your roadmap to heaven, you better get on the roadmap. It's the truth, brother. I believe it. Amen. If you want to go to heaven, you gotta find that. In the word of God, how to get there. You cannot make the let this Bible. No. This is correct your thinking. Young folks, some of you dabbling in the world. Some of you are flirting with the world. Some of you are trying things that you never have tried before. Some of you are curious. Some of you are just reaching out to the world because you want to try a little bit. You want to, you want to sow a few wild seeds. You want to, you, you, don't, you don't want to go through life and miss out on what the world's got to offer for you. You're trying it. But the Word of God will correct you. The Word of God will show you the right way. The Word of God will teach you what to do with your life. And, oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost here. And I'm preaching this truth to you tonight. I know God will direct you in the right way. Yes, he if you want to know the right way. Yes, he Amen. He'll teach you the right way. He'll teach you how to fix your head. He'll teach you how to dress. He'll yes, teach you. He the places to go to, the places not to go to. The Holy Ghost will Help teach you through the principles of the Word of God will teach you. Right. If you've got a high car, I tell you, you got to have a high car. You've got to you have a high for the truth. You've got to have a high for the Word of God. And God will teach you through the Word of God what you need to know. Hey, don't you listen to a backslidden generation. Don't you listen to a backslidden church. Don't follow the path of people that's fallen out with God. Don't follow the pattern of people that quit praying. Yes. Don't follow the pattern of people that quit following the truths of the Bible. Give me that word of God, and God will teach you the right way. Amen. He will. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Help him, God. Help him. I'm going to quit. Oh, I said no. There's a way that seems right under the bed, and there was that scribe and Pharisees eating around the corner said, You're a generation of snakes, you're hypocrites. Yes. That's right. Cry out and spare lots and lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people a transgression out of the of their skin. Don't, don't preach food things and God will win the hell. Yeah, oh God. That's what's happening, brother. That's it. That's what's happening. Oh God. God, help us. Oh God. My heart is burning. I tell you, sometimes you may think I'm mad, but my heart is burning. My heart is broken. I see the hour we're living in. Do you see the hour we're living in? Do you know where we're at on God's timetable? Do you understand how close we are to the coming of the Lord? What are we doing with this this limited amount of time we've got? What are we doing for Jesus? What are we doing for the Son of God? And are we neglecting the things that are most important to our souls? What are we doing while Jesus is tearing and on the horizon is the promise of his coming? That's right. What are we doing? Oh, the God of heaven. Us. You want to receive the Holy Ghost. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you'll have power to witness. How many people witness to other people? Hear right. other people? Right. Not only without words, but without life. Yes. God will give us a life, and our life will be a witness to those oh, about us. Right. I'm telling you, Jesus. you're leading somebody to heaven, or you're leading somebody to hell. You are. Way, God, God help me. Oh. God help us to be alive. God help us to be concerned Jesus. about that soul that works with us, goes to school with us, lives yes. with us in our home. Oh. Because we're leading somebody to heaven, or we're leading somebody to hell. By the way, we're living before them. No man, man, no man liveth to himself, no man dies to himself. If you go with God, somebody will follow you. If you go to hell, I'll follow you. That's right, brother. None of us live by ourselves. None of us die by ourselves. We're all affecting somebody around us. That's right. Praise God. King's in my brother's keeper. I'll tell you something. We are responsible for our influence. We are responsible, brother. We are responsible. I want you to understand something tonight before I close.
there's something going on in the spirit world tonight. The Bible tells us that men would turn from the truth. They would listen to seducing spirits, the doctrines of devils. You don't have to be deceived. I mean, deception is not necessarily being carried away with the Jehovah's Witnesses or being carried away with the um, Mormonism or Catholicism or Mary worship or Mary worship. But deception can be just as simple as believing that I can sin and there'll be no consequences to my sin. It could just be that simple that I can sin and there are no consequences to my sin. No folks have swallowed that lie over and over again. One young girl in this survey that I mentioned to you tonight was asked, tell me, what do you believe? What is the basis of your belief? What is the evidence of your faith? And she didn't really know what to say, but she finally went to say, and she said, well, you know, if you're going to sin, then you, you need to ask God for forgiveness, and he'll always forgive you. And you just, uh, you know, when you're going to sin, just make sure you ask him for forgiveness. And that's the thinking of many people. Internal security. security. Internal security. Yes, thanks, brother. Well, he said sin every day and word means nothing. That's the only way the devil can sin. That you're no Christian to live like that. That's right. And you know, the Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man so that shall be also real God. That is the truth of the word of God. If you sin, you're going to reap what you sow. So it's important for us tonight to understand the value of the Word of God. The devil is active in deceiving souls tonight. He knows he's got no short time. The most dangerous thing to you, young people, and to you, saints of God, is not persecution, but deception. That is the most dangerous thing of the last days is deception. And I want us to understand the importance of seeking the face of God. I'm so glad God saved me when I was a young man. And I would say this most about telling you, God did a work in my heart. Oh, thank God. And uh, later on, I was 13 when he saved me, about 15 years old, the Lord sanctified me. Fill me with the Spirit, the power of God, baptized with the Holy Ghost. And later, call me to the ministry. But I remember as just a young boy, teenager, in school. I'm seeking the face of God. My heart was hungry for God. I would take my lunch break and go out on the mountainside at school and spend my lunch break in prayer, seeking the face of God. Take my Bible with me, read my Bible, cry and weep before God, studying the Word of God. It is like cold waters to a thirsty soul. My heart was hungry for God. I would go home in the evenings after school and find me a place to pray, find me a place to seek the face of God, spend time before God. My, my family were godly people. Homeless people, my dad was a homeless preacher, and they were astonished to see God working in such a way in my life. But I will tell you, young folks, God wants to work in your life in the same way. Give you such a hunger and desire for God that you'll hunt a place to pray. Oh, see the face of God. You'll study the word, love the Bible. Hallelujah. Love the word of God. Praise God. Oh, it will be your life. Every day, you'll eat off the table of the Lord. God will give you that time of desire of the Lord. You know, the question for us tonight is, is not only was that once true of my life, but is that true of my life right now? Jesus said, when I return, will I find faith? Right. Because of the difficulties, because of the disappointments, because of the opposition, when the Son of Man comes, 
shall be punished. Will you and I be faithful when the Lord comes back? Let's stand together tonight. I'd like to pray.
back and forth from work, and you feel like you're just you're just running yourself to death. You've got to make time for God. Somewhere you've got to make time for God. And I'm telling you, there have been times it was my lunch hour. It was more important for me to pray than to eat. And uh, I'd finally be in a place to pray and seek the face of God. Break time, find your place to pray. Seek God. Take your Bible to work. Study your Bible. Oh, yeah, there's ways to do it, brother. If, if you're constrained for time, then you've got to make time for God somehow. Oh, this, your soul's more important than your body. That's right. But you need to make time for God in your schedule. Hallelujah. David said, search me and know my heart and try me and come with us. They told me they want me to have an echocardiogram, so I went to the hospital. And, and the nurse took some and it rubbed around over here and she said you don't have a kidney over there now if man can make a thing that he can look inside of you and see what's in there what about almighty God you can't hide from God he can search your heart he knows everything